know how it is, lies and we're action. We gon' keep this party jumping, gotta give it a little something just to keep the fellas looking. You know how it is. Got em hooked, I got em crazy on the music. You know how it is, let's party all night. Oh, rock until the break up. Yo, what's going on, everybody? Y'all know what it is. It's the love show where we let our voices empower. I am the fire starter, of course. Yeah, you can't see me, but if, if you did see me, you see me with a Rise Up Family mask on. Make sure you go get that. All right, make sure you go get that Rise Up Family mask. Go hit my man Marcus Betts up right now. All right, make sure you do that. Man, we got Rise Up masks everywhere, all right? Now, I got lovely folks to my left and my right, true blue. It's tight like glue. Oh, oh, oh. My God, that's living single. That's living single. I'm living single. I don't know if I'm living single. <laughs> uh, that, that's what the thing. Uh, what's going you on, Frederick? These shows pass me like that. What's good? What's good? How are you? I'm 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 good. I I, could, I can't say I'm chilling because it's, it's stupid hot outside, but I'm good. But Yo, you know, vitamin E. What's good, vitamin what's good, E? What's good, everybody? Yeah, what you what you Happy Friday, about? everybody. What you telling them, Vi? Huh? You get into it. Get into it. Just make sure you get into it. Get into it. Your Yo, favorite friend. YouTuber. If you I, guys haven't subscribed, I need you guys to meet me on YouTube. And subscribe to Elena TV. Get into it. <laughs> That's a fact. Right, right. What was you saying? Just a second ago. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm saying, I mean, I'm, I'm good. But you know what made me better? If you know what? If we were still... A week is still, you know, because a couple weeks ago was a good day. Today's a good day. Yesterday's still, any other days in between. You know, ar arrest the murderers masquerading as law enforcement officers that have murdered, you know, uh, Breonna Taylor that resulted in Elijah McClain's death. You know, it, it's a good day to still do that. It's, it's always a good day for that. Every day has been a good day for that. Y'all saw LeBron's yeah. hat. America arrest the kill. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a good day. It's a good day to go snatch them up, round them all up, arrest them all. <laughs> and that's the thing, you ain't got to snatch nobody, you got to round nobody. Y'all know their names, their addresses, where they live. It's not like they fugitives and you can't find them. Like, you know, just where y'all been sending their paychecks. Start there. You know, yeah. <laughs> or at least let us know why you are not arresting these people. You know, you got the entire, you got, you know, what, 60, 70% of the country asking for this. If you're not going to do it, at least let us know why. That's all I'm saying, you know. The entity of law enforcement is to believe, you know, that, that it's just a few bad apples, you know, show us that you're not rotten to the core and, you know, do the right thing. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Andre, how are you? What'd you, what'd you say? What'd you say, Frederick? I said, how are you? always ask us how we doing. Let me ask, how you doing, sir? How are, how are you? I'm doing good this fine Friday, man. I'm I'm doing good. I'm actually talking to my lovely uh show host. Oh, there you go. All right. Yes. I was I was talking to, to my sister right here, Letitia. What up, Letitia Hardison? Got to make an entrance. Diva. Pizza <laughs> in the house. There you go. Now, our Evangela. Yes. There she go, looking all <laughs> dap, dapper. Look at her. Look at her. Yes. yes. Beautiful. That red lip. Uh huh. We just need to need you to turn on your uh your audio. Oh. Turn on your mic, boy. Turn that mic on, pretty lady. All right. Um, Frederick. Oh. Yes, sir. Got a question. Yes. Uh, I know this ain't on the docket. We're going to get into the docket today, what's going on on the love show, but I have to ask. Curveballs. Curveballs. I, I have to ask, what speech was the best speech that you heard this week? <laughs> all right. Well, first of all, um, I'm going to have to say, say with uh, – uh, Dr. Michelle Obama, because that's the only one that I've heard. I'm, I'm uh, listening to Brock's is on my agenda. I I don't watch the the conventions 
Democratic or Republican. I think they're yeah for 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 me the reason I did watch Michelle Obama's speech. I will watch Barack's. I just I missed it yesterday. I didn't get around to it. So by default, I'm gonna have to go with hers because hers is the only one that I listen to. Um, and <laughs> you know, I mean, she 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 put some things out there that's that's true, and I posted on my page like, yo, y'all gonna <laughs> y'all gonna let Michelle uh, uh, speak the truth about the president like that? So, but I mean, here, here's the thing: Did Michelle not do what she always does? A beautiful, eloquent, educated, accolade, accolade, accolade woman went up there and did what she does. So I was not, I was not surprised one bit by her speech. Um, when I get around to listen to Barack's speech, I will not be surprised one bit by his speech because that he put, that's what he does. Um, on the flip side, when the current POTUS speak, for different reasons, I'm not surprised by his speeches either because that's what he does. <laughs> so, I'm just gonna leave it at that. <laughs> Yes, we just going to leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. Because that is the truth. Absolutely. All right. So we know what we got on the dock. I should have played the Judge Wapner music. But nevertheless, it's all good because it's all right here. We are going to get into today's topics, which concern the U.S. Postal Service. So, I need y'all to unpack this. What's going on with the U.S. Postal Service? What's going on as far as America? I, 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 I smell some shadiness. Go ahead. But but unpack it for us, for all of us that, that don't know. I mean, you can smell the shadiness. You you, you can taste the shadiness. It's just, but <laughs> as I kind of alluded to, this does not surprise me because people do what people do. And I'm not naming no names with people. All right, so I, I was kind of looking into this, you know, the whole thing with the post office and, and what's going on right now. So we have a man, uh, Louis DeJoy, who was appointed by the Board of Governors uh, of the United States Postal Service as the 75th Post, Postmaster General and CEO. Now, this man is a major donor and a fundraiser for the Trump campaign and for the Republican Party in general. Um, in April of 2017, he was named one of the three deputy finance chairman of the Republican National Committee. So from a political standpoint, we're dealing with a situation where there is no neutrality. There is no neutrality from a political standpoint exactly what side this man is on. Cool. And, and that's why there's controversy about him is because you know he has strong Republican connections. Um, also, he's the first postmaster in 20 years without any experience in the United States Postal Service. This man previous to being appointed to this position, has absolutely no ties, no prior connections, employment or affiliation directly with the United States Postal Service, which if you look at this organization, that's kind of been a trend. People being placed in, in positions that they have no previous work in. You have uh, Dr. Ben Carson, who is a world-renowned neuro neurosurgeon. Like, say what you want about that man, about his personal life, his political life, but when that man has is, is got a scalpel in his hand and in the hospital, he can't say nothing for that dude. But then he's appointed the, 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 the Department of, of Housing and Urban Development. Like, okay, that's not even what you, your whole arena is over here and we threw you over here. So this is not new for this administration. Um, the problem with this is, is the way things, way things were set up. So basically, and I'm not gonna get into all the specifics, you know, for the interest of time. Trump was pretty much, handed uh, this this situation on a silver platter where there was really no incumbents. He was pretty much free to maneuver through this with the post office and put people in place. Um, imagine if a president came in and they were able to appoint like all nine Supreme Court justices or like seven out of nine or something like that. That's kind of the equivalent here where, there, where he was pretty much handed a, a blank slate to do whatever he wanted this, with this position. And for whatever reason, and I say that in the interest of being, you know, being speculative, for whatever reason, he's chosen to go this route. So now you have the post, uh, the post office removing the post box, PO boxes, taking out the sorting machines, basically doing a lot of things that will make it a lot more difficult for a country of millions, hundreds of millions of people during a pandemic where people are told to not be out, exercise social distancing. So in a situation where mail-in voting is going to be very, very crucial more so in this election than any in recent memory, the entity of our government that is directly tied to that, to handle the ballots, to handle the sword and things like that, 
is now being crippled in the months leading up to an election. Now we can speculate why and what is, and is this exactly really, or we can just use some common sense and be like, why would a sitting president who does not have the best, uh, let's say public opinion and people don't really, you know, there's a lot of things going on with this man. Why would you hinder the post office from being able to count people's votes in a country where that is what that is what we tout ourselves as we're de- democratic and vote and everybody vote matters and and by the people for the people what the people want and you're going to hinder the people's ability to have their vers- voices heard so I'm, I'm gonna stop there and let somebody else weigh in and we, we got we got some more meeting and stuff to unpack oh no continue keep going okay well <laughs> so again as I'm I said people say okay. what they're gonna say and it doesn't surprise me so Here's a quote from from Trump, and I'm going to read this exactly as it's written, because, again, people talk how they talk. They want $3.5 billion for something that will turn out to be fraudulent. That's election money, basically. They want $3.5 trillion billion for the mail-in votes. Okay, universal mail-in ballots, $3.5 trillion. They want $25 billion, billion for the post office. Now, they need that money in order to have the post office work so it can take all of these millions and millions of ballots, now, if we don't make a deal, that means they don't get the, that money. That means they can't have universal mail and voting. They just can't have it. So, you know, sort of a crazy thing. Very interesting. So you just said that the post office has asked for this funding so that way they can conduct themselves the way they need to to be able to count in these millions and millions of ballots, which they're anticipating more mail and ballots this year than, than the previous years because of the pandemic. They need the money so in order the post office work. So we take all these millions and millions of ballots. Now, if we don't make a deal, that means they don't get the money. So you understand the importance of this. Why are you blocking it? Why are you not allowing the post office, which has its own, aside from this, the post office has had its own issues with just, you know, I guess, you know, with technology and, and convenience, a lot of people, you know, phasing out the post office. There's, the post office has been in the news lately, like we need to keep the post office, you know, regardless if you don't use it all the time, the importance of the post office, we must always have a post office. So they're already in a situation. Now they're in a situation where we're anticipating a problem. We're anticipating that, yo, we're about to be flooded with important mail. We're not talking about, oh, it's going to be Christmas and people sending Christmas cards. No, we're talking about the American people exercising their right to decide who their legislators are going to be. Important mail. We are anticipating a situation. And not only are you denying us the opportunity to be equipped for this, but then you're also going to hinder us by taking mailboxes out, Put in the red lock boxes that we've all seen in pictures and some people have seen in, in real life on mailboxes, removing counting and sorting machines. Basically, what you are doing is you are purposely tying our hands behind our back in an effort to have this election go into craziness, chaos. And then we end up in a situation like we had in 2002 where, you know, we have the election, but nobody knows who won the election. And then all kinds of craziness ensues. And then it's like, all right, well, this person won. And we're still like, OK, are you sure? So, I mean... It's like, like you said, Andre, it's, you, you smell some fishiness, you can taste some fishiness, some shadiness. And the sad thing about it is, is, is it's not surprising coming from this particular administration. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Fred. You um, hit a lot of points that um, I was going to say. And I, I'm with the people um, as far as taking a stand and standing up. Um, I'm going to go with what Obama suggested, you know, he um, even made a tweet on Twitter. If you can vote early, do it. Do not wait to the last minute, because now as we see, you know, they're trying to make it difficult for us. Um, so you don't have to pinch, you know, last minute trying to run to the polls and things of that nature. If you can vote early, vote early, because where is the evidence? Trump is stating that the post office um, is not safe, but like, where's the evidence? You know, he's claiming, you know, voters fraud through the mail. So that's why he's trying to, you know, delete that as an option for the people. But where is the evidence that there's been voters fraud? Where's the evidence? And he can't really give us that. So I stand with, I, I agree. If you you know what they're trying to do. They're trying to make it as hard as possible for people to vote. 
So if you can vote early in your state, definitely start now. And, and, and to that point, they've been doing stuff like this. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, in, in primary elections, we had a situation, I believe it was in Georgia, where they, they you know, like the week of the, the election, oh, we only have certain, certain, so many machines and this and that. And so you have it's situations where people are in line eight plus hours. That's a work shift. Think about when you go to your job, how long that seems. Now imagine taking that yeah. same amount of time and you're standing in line to vote in places where it may be super hot and humid. It might be super cold, things like that. So the issue, I mean, obviously this is, this is, this is a new incarnation of, you know, the voter suppression, if you will, basically hindering people's ability to go down and do something that as an American collective, we tout as That's it, right. Best things about us. The thing that separates us from every other country. One of the reasons why we're the greatest nation on earth is because we have this process where you go down and choose leadership. My question is, why is it that in 2020 it's so difficult for people to just go down and choose leadership? Why is it so difficult for people to either go down and cast their ballot in person? Voting should not be an all day activity. I'm sorry. I'm, I don't care. It shouldn't be. Smack dab in the middle of New York City, the largest populated city in the world. It should not be an all day activity because it should run smoothly. It's 2020. We got computers. Everybody has a smartphone in their pocket. But you mean to tell me that the voting process, the machines and the technology we rely on for voting is still antiquated and outdated? Like, what are we spending our money on? Why is it that we have money for, for all types of, of war and things like that, but we never have money for things that matter to the American people in our day to day lives? Um. Because with this, the post office, they were, you know, they were asking for, uh, let me see, I wrote this down. You know, he he decided, uh, this Louis DeJoy, he decided to divert, not to divest, 30 to $75 million. Oh, no, excuse me, excuse me, that's a different, different field. Um, but part of his contrary is because he did not divest 30 to $75 million in equity state in a company, XPD, which is a subcon subcontractor subcontractor for the USPS. So that's part of this controversy as well, because he has ties and monetary connections, which have we not heard that about this administration before people having conflict of interest and things like that. And where in past it was like, Oh no, nope, that's automatically. But now it's like, we just kind of, Oh, Oh, you got business ties of this and that and not. Yeah. But that's another issue. But the post office, you know, they're asking for funds for, they cut out OT. So it was basically like, Nope, when your shift is over, your shift is over. They got rid of the counting machines over 600. 600 high speed sorting machines to be have been removed um, in an effort to quote unquote reduce costs. But again, that slowed down the mail. If the mail has already been slowed down and the post office is preparing for, you know, when we get into our late October, November, this onslaught of all these ballots and you've already handcuffed us, how are we supposed to handle this? And again, it's a right. perfect form for when the election is botched and mangled for certain people to come out and cry foul if things don't go their way or if things are not appearing to go their way. So, and I mean, and again, like I say, we, we've seen this before with voter suppression. Okay, we're gonna require you to have a government ID to go down and vote, which I'm 100% okay with. I actually didn't realize you didn't have to have a government ID because I've had a government ID literally since I was born. So it's, when somebody asked me for ID, I, it never, I never think twice about it. But okay, you need to have a government ID to go down and register to vote. Okay, cool. That's not the problem. The problem is, is when you turn around and you tell people, okay, well, where do you get the government ID? Okay, from the DMV. All right, cool, I'm gonna go down to the DMV. Yeah, sorry, we closed that one. All right, well, what's the next closest one? Oh, oh, nope, we closed that one as well. When you close down the DMVs in specific counties that are inhabited by specific demographics of people to where therefore it's still not impossible you, for you to vote, but now instead of you going two and a half miles to the DMV, you gotta go all the way across the state. Some right. people don't have to do that. And then, you know, if you go to the DMV, that's a two, three, four hour trip that you should plan on. You might get out earlier, but you mm -hmm. go to the DMV, you got to carve out a chunk of your day. But now imagine if yeah, you're going to be waiting. Right. You're a three, waiting. Four hour round trip just to get to the DMV, then to be at the DMV possibly for three, four hours. Some people can't do that. Other people are not going to do that. And you can put it on there. Yes. Okay. They didn't tell you not to vote. They didn't tell you couldn't do it. But why are we making it so difficult for people to vote? And then specifically certain demographics of people to vote like and again as we we've been talking about subjects the past couple of weeks with portland and and pedophilia and things like that at what point is there going to be enough stuff going on to where people are going to be like you know what enough is enough like when are we going to turn on the news and be like man 
10,000 people showed up at the Capitol building, guns blaze, well, not blazing, but guns out, like, yo, we demand that y'all, you know, cut it out. Because this is what a tyrannical government looks like, people. Like, I know a lot of people think you have images of, like, Red Dawn and, like, tanks rolling down the streets and everything like that. No, that's what a tyrannical government looks like when you've gone way past the point of no return. But this right here is what a tyrannical government looks like. What we talked about in Portland, agencies coming together and doing things that people are not overtly aware of, snatching people up into vans, questioning them, doing things that, again, are outside our norm. That's tyrannical government. When the government tells you that your greatest, greatest duty as a citizen is to vote to elect change, but then they turn around and make it as difficult as possible for you to do that for no legitimate reason. That's a tyrannical government. When the people involved in higher up places of your government are most likely involved in selling and having sex with children. And whenever some, somebody is caught and pulled out, that person is eliminated or removed by those people. That is a tyrannical government. So I say this again for those of y'all watching and those of y'all that will watch coming up this Monday on the network. This is what a tyrannical government looks like. When you read the Second Amendment, the reason why they gave you the right to bear arms, to rise up in case the government ever gets tyrannical, this is what it looks like. And that's it. <laughs> um, we got some comments in the comment section. I was just, I was just going. Yeah, what's up, Dwayne? Uh, Robert said he has an idea. Just drop your ballot at your polling place. Right. There's, that is an uh, option. And for our viewers, you guys, please share, share, share. Um, I want to say hello to our new viewers also. And you guys, if you haven't already, make sure that you download the app on point network it's free it's on google play so that way if you guys can watch the whole show um you can watch all of the episodes even beginning back to episode one and yeah on point network and you want to download the love show for sure yeah so i'm gonna read this comment so, by uh, shout out Dwayne Woodley. he okay. says uh, why because politics makes the simple things in life difficult However, people put trust and participate in that game of apathy. And that's so true. And again, because mm -hmm. we're playing politics and that's, you know, why my, my views about American politics and political party are the way they are. Because again, I don't go by what people say. I go by what you show. And with America having this two party system, I don't care if you on this side, that side, both sides have shown that their interest is not in doing what's best for the American people. Their interest is in staying in power. My goal when I get elected is to do what it takes to get reelected, not do what it takes to better the lives of my constituents, to better the lives of my family and those around me. No. As soon as I get elected, all right, appreciate you. Thank you for your votes. Thank you for, for electing me. All right. Now, how do we get elected in two years? How do we get elected in four years? Whatever the, the term may be. And as an American public, again, we'll sit here and argue over who pile, whose pile of poo poo smells better and has the least amount of corn in it? And some of us are looking like, yo, <laughs> both holding piles of doo doo. Like, I don't care who got the, like, you're holding piles of doo doo. Maybe we should do something to where people are not holding piles of doo doo. Because look at this coming upcoming election. You got the incumbent, and then you have the Democratic nominee, and then you have the whole field, which, you know, I know you have Joe Jorgensen and a bunch of other people that nobody's ever heard of. Like, but let's keep it real, realistically. Those people are not going to win the election. So it's going to come down between one candidate that a whole bunch of people don't like and another candidate that a whole bunch of people don't like. And the funny thing is, is that in this particular go around, the reason why people don't like them is kind of for the same reason. They both kind of have the same track record. You know, they both have sketchy sexual history and, and behaviors. They both have sketchy, right. uh, sketchy track records when it comes to race. They both are, are very old and have sketchy mental facilities. You know, people talk about, you know, oh, Crazy Joe and, and Joe Biden being senile. And there's things that he said and done where you're like, OK, yeah, it looks like the, you know, the, the, the beginning of senility. But then again, when you listen to the way Trump speaks, like you just talk for 37 seconds and you literally said nothing. So, again, oh. <laughs> which old senile, questionable race, questionable sex history man do you want? The one over here on the blue or the one over here in the red? And it's like, why do we have to pick either one of these crazy 
questionable, intelligent, questionable. Like, how is it that in a country of 300 plus million people, these are our options? And again, because this is and people, that's why people are so torn. And that's why a lot of people feel hopeless as far as like if their vote is even going to count because they don't trust either candidate. Like, right. And then when you factor in this, OK, so my choices are I can either go down and vote in person, <laughs> and risk standing in line and, and going down and them talking about, oh, well, the ballot machines broke and this and that. And I've wasted my entire day and may not get to vote or I could just vote by mail. But oh, now the post office things are screwy going with that. So if I vote by mail, there's a chance that when I put my my ballot into the receptacle, it might disappear in my Mike Tyson voice. It might just fade to Bolivia. Like these are my <laughs> options. And again, the question is: in the greatest nation on earth, we're supposed to be, you know, we're supposed to be all that. And voting is one of the things we hold ourselves up. With. Why is our voting process this bad? This in, and I'm saying it's embarrassing. Because all right, mm-hmm. me, remember the two? Where were you at in the 2000 election with the whole with the whole Bush situation and the ch- and we all learned what a Chad was. Which why does a little piece of paper that gets punched out of another piece of paper? Why do we have a name for that? But do you you remember that situation in in 2000 the 2000 election? Not really. I don't remember last. Not this way. Not really. <laughs> like you remember it, but you wish you didn't. <laughs> I mean, mm-mm. this is bad. Sister Gunner, where you at? All oh, right now. A video. Can't keep a good woman down. Can't keep her down. So I remember that election. I was young. I was living in Tahoe, just out on my own. And I knew some people that lived internationally, and we would, you know, correspond through email. And I remember they would hit me up like, "Yo, y'all got a president yet?" Like joking, like y'all, y'all pick somebody yet? Like what's going on? And and that's. <laughs> As America, we need to pay it. We really need to pay attention to how the world receives us. Not, that, and I'm not saying we should make moves based on the opinions of other countries, but we need to, as a, as a part of a community, a worldwide community, you got to pay attention to how your community members view you. So the fact that mm-hmm. America, how many countries have we gone around to and destabilized their government and their system of doing things? I'm like, no, you need to be like us and democracy and and have voting and have elections, and then we turn around and we can't even do it. Like, that's embarrassing. That is truly embarrassing. As a nation, we should be embarrassed. The people in charge of this nation should be embarrassed. What say you, Letitia? Oh, you still, I know audio. <laughs> we, we can't hear you. Oh, my God. So hey, we got it. technical difficulties in Baltimore. To see the big smile <laughs> on her face. Right. <laughs> she, she got something for us. She want to get it out. You know what she, and those of y'all know, y'all know she's spitting knowledge right now and the world is missing it. <laughs> the universe is like, what? Because you know she come with the fire. That's why her That's why her background is a little bit red because it's smoldering over there because she ain't been able to unleash <laughs> nothing yet. And that fire is there. And, but what? You hear me now? Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, we can. Jeez, <laughs> guys. Okay, so no. I'm so sorry, y'all. I'm red because I had my janky computer, my my desktop um, video. I've been listening to you, Fred. This is what I'll say. We're in trouble. We're in trouble because people still do not understand how this works. And they are not seeing what's happening. Let's just dive into, like, our Congress. They've allowed him to run amok. And everything's going to circle back to your vote. No, you don't control the presidential vote, but you control the seats of the people who allow him to run amok like this. And they've allowed him to run amok because nobody wants to cross party lines. This is all about party lines. So basically what you have is a bunch of old money and a bunch of old allies sitting in the same seats, running amok, 
and allowing him to do stuff like delegate somebody to postmaster general who has no experience, no type of competency in the um in the job. And like Fred alluded to, well, like he said about Ben Carson, brilliant man. And I was so sad that he ran on that ticket in that administration because now I look at him questionable and that was my hero. Right. Everybody, and I think that's his point. I think the point is the level of narcissism that Trump has. He wants to make sure that nobody looks more competent than him. Exactly. And that's crazy. <laughs> that's way to that, do that. That's absolutely insane because this is this is what narcissism looks like. I want all of you guys to love me. I want to run amok and make a mockery of this seat. And I still want y'all to love me and put me back in office. To run them up and let me mess up some more. Yeah, yeah. Let me run some more. <laughs> yeah. And how, how crazy is it that the entire country knows what narcissism is because we have a blaring example sitting in the White House? Like, if you ask people, you know, 10 years ago, what's a yeah, what four year old person looks like? People are like, I don't know, me maybe. But you ask them right now, be right? the definition. You ain't even got to define it. You could just be like, 10 years from now, 10 years from now, y'all, we going to see narcissism in the in the dictionary and Trump's picture is going to be there. Yeah. See also, Donald, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, and I love that point that you brought up about how him, you know, wanting, not wanting anybody else to pretty much outshine him. And how do you do that? You put people in, in positions that they're, that they're not qualified for, that they're not, that they don't have any- right. Because normally your postmaster general would be somebody that's been in the U.S. postal system for years, you know, kind of, and they know the ropes. So they get in there and it's like, yeah, you know, I worked with the last postmaster general. So I already know what the job entails. It's just me going in there to do it. So when you take a fish and take them out of water, now they look like an incompetent flopping around thing. But if you take that fish and leave them in the water, oh, they swimming around. And like you talked about Ben Carson. I, I tell you all the time, like, no, nah, we don't mess with Ben Carson. We love Dr. Ben Carson, but we don't mess with Ben Carson. And it's sad that that as brilliant as that man is, things that he's done in his field, we have to make that distinction because he still deserves the reverence for what he's done in his field. Yeah. So we, we got to be all right. Mm, a campaign, Ben Carson? Nah. Dr. Ben Carson, yes. Little boys and girls, yes. You <laughs> see things like that, yes. Look at Ben Carson. Is that the same? No, not at the same. That's Ben Carson. Dr. Carson. Two, two different. Right. <laughs> Just you know, you got and then what Betsy Devos in the Secretary of Education don't know what she's doing. But again, I'm gonna put you in a position now. You look incompetent. The more incompetent people I have around me, now I clearly look like the superstar on the team. Now I clearly look like LeBron or like the O3 it, whatever. Like, yeah, it's isn't just, it disturbing though that he looks like the super superstar? And he's still an imbecile, like I, I I is it not that. egregious <laughs> that y'all being so nice with the names? Because I know y'all really want to say something else. I'm, I'm offended. Go. I'm like, <laughs> you did what, sir? What? You see, it doesn't surprise me. And then he's Nothing so he ignorant. <laughs> like he's it so doesn't ignorant. surprise me. It like, doesn't surprise me. Like it doesn't don't. surprise me, Elena. But like some of the things he says is so egregious. <laughs> Chinese flu has been grinding my gears since it came out this man's mouth. It's so offensive. Let's <laughs> drink bleach. I was done after he said, "Rub the bleach for me." Drink. I, I was done. I was insane, and I'm like, <laughs> "Sir, are you insane?" Because no, there are provisions. For the kind of insanity that's been displayed, somebody was supposed anybody to say can run for president. If he could be the president, anybody. But, but <clears throat> the Chinese flu is all right. You said it, trying to be cute because you got this little beef with y'all, whatever, whatever. But once it is made known that citizens of this country. Who are the, what, what, what country are you the president? You're the president of this country, right? So all citizens, regardless of whether you agree with the, whatever, all citizens of this country are under your leadership. 
once it has become known that citizens of this country are being attacked and harm is being done to them because of their Asian descent, because people are, you know, oh, this, this flu is the China flu and, and you're Asian and I don't know if you're Japanese, Korean, Chinese, whatever, but whatever, I don't care. So I'm going to attack you because I'm going to hold you responsible for this flu. Once that is public knowledge, you absolutely must cease and desist with that rhetoric because your words are now putting your citizens in danger and the irresponsibility that it takes for somebody to know this but still continue because you want to get your little quips in, your little little jabs in at, a, at another country that you beefing with, not beefing with, whatever. You cannot do that at the expense of American lives. I don't care how many it was. Oh, it was just two or three. One is too many. One, because the, that person in the hospital with bumps and bruises and scars and scrapes, and you want to explain that, well, I had to sacrifice your safety so that way I can get a little, little jab in at this other country. No, no, sir. No, sir, that is not the actions of a leader. And I said before, he is in a leadership position, but he is not a leader. He is a boss. He has been a boss. A, 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 absolutely. He and not a I, he's you not know, a leader. We, we drifted a little off topic here, but I, I totally agree with you. I think that he is running the United States, not only like a business, but he also assumes that it's a monarchy um, because that, that's mm -hmm. what he wants. He wants total power. Um, mm -hmm. And with this post, this postmaster um, business, it's just, it's crazy. I don't know who said it in the comments because I couldn't see, but I could hear. I totally agree. Drop your ballots at your nearest polling station, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. There should not be any reason that you are not voting. Um, I thought we had some pictures. I might have missed it. Because there, there's just stockpiles of mailboxes oh, everywhere. It. And I wanted to point out, because I've seen it a lot lately, and I don't know about you guys. I've also seen the fact that they are snatching mailboxes, but like they're, they've also upgraded a great deal of trucks. So I don't know if those two correlate, but I feel like I should point that out for sake of giving facts in this conversation. Um. I just, I, it, it, it looks like you're tampering with the election, sir. Right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw yeah. this, little, this, yeah. this little nugget out. So as we know, the mail collection boxes were being removed. After right. the photos, his social now, and, and I'm, when I say this, tell me if this sounds familiar, like something we kind of talked about last week, the same vein. So they were, the boxes are being removed. After right. the photos you alluded to of the, 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 the uh, mailboxes being stopped out, after those photos hit social media, a spokesperson said they were being moved to higher traffic areas. But removals will stop until after the election. Why? If you decided to start moving those boxes mm -hmm. for a legitimate reason, and then John Q. Public sees that you're moving these, removing these mailboxes, why would you stop moving them if the reason is, is legit? Because it sounds to me like exactly. we were doing crazy stuff. <laughs> Once y'all found out we doing some shady stuff, okay, now we're going to stop. We're not going to move anymore to after the election. So you mean, so again, it's one of two things. Either y'all was do, like, like, I, like we talked about last week with, you know, police brutality and how things change once we find out about stuff. So either y'all was doing some shady stuff and you got caught or you didn't, nobody thought, hey, you know what? There's an election coming up. Maybe we should wait till after the election to do this. Either one of those. So either you're shady or you're grossly incompetent to not know that this is a person, like which, as American people, which one of those are we more comfortable with? And this is the thing, and this is why it infuriates me because not only do they do shady things, but they insult my personal intelligence. They insult your intelligence because they realize like, okay, we can do whatever we want and they're not gonna question, they're not gonna ask any questions, they're not even gonna be smart enough to notice and think, wait a minute, wait a minute. And then when we do think, wait a minute, wait a minute, they're like, okay, well, we'll just stop. And it's like, okay, great, you just stopped. But what about the fact that you started? We got to acknowledge the fact that you started in the first place. That you don't just get, like, if you're doing something wrong and you get caught doing it, you stop doing it, you don't just get off the hook. Like, you know what? You were speeding. Yeah, officer, but I'm sitting here doing zero miles per hour now, so I'm good, right? No, you're getting this ticket for what you was doing a minute ago. Where is it with that? So Listen, check, check this comment out. Biblical lesson, but re relevant. Do not give the appearance of sin 
<laughs> even if you have a reason, you shouldn't do it when it appears to be inappropriate. It came out of my watch party, sorry. But right. Pretty darn relevant. Like exactly. just like just like you said, like no matter how how you, you shape that, whether it's because you got caught or because you're that incompetent, there's <laughs> a problem here. And I think the second one is even more egregious than the first, in right. my opinion. Like I feel like if you're you just want to cheat and you got caught, oops. Shame on you. But if you're that incompetent. And, and again, <laughs> incompetence is like, you know, if you have to, to use some key terms to describe this administration over the last almost four years, there's no way that incompetent does not make that list. There's no way that corrupt not make that list. I mean. And I mean, and, he, this is the man that calls Hillary Clinton, crooked Hillary. Like, Hey, but um, excuse me. Sir, how many people <laughs> in your in your administration in the last four years have been arrested, questioned, indicted? Like, <laughs> like you, people that support this man. Well, oh no, he's not a criminal. Who you know that ain't involved in criminal activity, but know nothing but criminals? You're not going to a crap house. Nothing but criminals. And right. the crazy thing is, because he's Donald J. Trump, he will never ever see a courtroom he will never ever serve time and, and you know that he you know it he has absolutely mm -hmm. absolutely mm -hmm. had he been a democrat he absolutely would have been impeached and removed exactly by now and that's that a man bill got impeached removed. for a bj huh mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i said bill got impeached for a bj okay i mean they impeached for less they, they impeached Trump. They just didn't remove him. Right. But also, also because Republicans play the game a lot better. <laughs> like, I, like, I don't mess with either party. But I got to say this. Republicans understand the game and they play it well. Because... They do. And this is the, and this is the thing that, that people crack me up. They, they, people want to talk about Obama, right? Republicans hated Obama with every ounce in their being. Every ounce of their being, they woke up hating Obama. They hated Obama while they was brushing their teeth. They hated everything about that man. And how close was he to impeachment hearings? Not never, never once. So that means that, that's that's a great point. <laughs> because if they had the littlest thing to impeach him over, oh, they would have they would have started hearings. So the fact that oh yeah, that's brought forth impeachment hearings. That right there lets you know that that man is guilty of something. Because if the team that if the team that is worse at it was able to get that far, but the team that is great at it wasn't able to get that far, that means that somebody did something wrong. The problem is, is the way I you know think. Obviously, he had the Senate and this and that, and, and we knew it wasn't going to go forth. And it was more so, you know, I think it was just more so just thing to say, yeah, we did we did bring impeachment hearings on you. You have that mark on your on your record for all time. Which the problem is for somebody like him. He's not going to look at it like, oh, man, I have that mark. He's going to be like, oh, I won. I won. That's how he's going to look I at don't like, care. Oh, so to I don't care. That's better. What else, what else is on the books, y'all? Because we, we, you know, this is turning into a Trump conversation. Right. We can go all day. <laughs> and hold me to crown. We can go all day. Trump conversation. Uh, by the way, the Postmaster General had to testify today, by the way. He, he had to testify. Today. Right. By the way, Master General said that he wasn't he wasn't uh, for Trump shenanigans too. I think that was reported yesterday that he wasn't going for Trump sh uh, shenanigans as far as the post office <laughs> shenanigans. So, but so but you, I, I mean, but how many people around him have have made certain comments about the things that he does, and they not right. with it? Right, they not with it. Here's the thing. Let's let's take it back. This, this this is something that's come up now with this with uh uh the new Democratic ticket and how you know uh Harris and Biden went at each other in the primaries and now obviously now she's endorsing Biden because she's his running mate. Remember when um when it was the Republicans? You know, okay, we got this whole Republican field, everybody against Trump, and all the things they said about Trump and all the way he behaved. 
with the personal attacks and things like that. But then once it got, you know, okay, well, I'm out. Now the field is getting narrowed down, field is getting narrowed down, and now they have to endorse the next person. Remember how they endorsed Trump? Remember how you were looking at all these men and women and you knew good and well they did not want to endorse this man for a damn. But I got to do what the party wants to do. So I am throwing my support behind Donald J. Trump for the next president. And you can see on their faces, their spirits, their attitude, they did not want to endorse this man. And it, so if your own team don't want you to be quarterback. But here, so here's the thing. With I, I think, I think in, in, in pointing that out, Fred, I need, need to point out again, because you know I'm all about voting and I'm all about voting responsibly. Um, America, if you see that your elected officials didn't want to support this man and then they did it, why are you putting them in these seats? Why is it okay for them to speak for you on your behalf and work on your behalf if they can't stand true to their own convictions despite party lines? All right. Y'all want to talk about the census? Let's talk about the census. Let's talk about the census. I got y'all now. I got y'all now. Census time. Census time. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Fill uh, out your form. <laughs> yeah. Please. I think a lot of people are not filling it out because they don't really understand what the census is. That is why we are diving into it today because we need you to fill it out. We especially need you to fill it out now that they have removed that citizenship question that Mr. Trump tried to slip in there this he, he year. Tried it. And the Supreme Ooh, he tried said, it. I, 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 no, we're not. He tried it. Oh man, he tried it. He oh. said, "He said, let's put it on." No, sir, we are not going to further your immigration agenda. We need to count these folks. Trying to, right? Trying to break the public's trust, ladies and no. gentlemen. We have been doing the U.S. Census since 1790. The U.S. Census is essential for us getting the things that we need, whether that be education, more funding for social services education, it, it ties into all of those things. You have to fill out your census. It is simply counting bodies and it is important not only for you, but everyone around you. It's not just about you. It is about us as a whole collectively. Right. I just want to do it though. Yeah. Just basic what the census is just in case anybody. So the, the census for 2020 was the 24th census that's been taken, and as you said, it's 1790. It's done every 10 years. Um, the, the cutoff date for the census was back in April 1st, so you've already missed it. However, you can still fill out your form either you know online up until, I believe, September 30th. And so they are going to be contacting people and trying to get people to, to get those, those that information. And numerators are, are coming out, knocking on doors. Yes, you can call in. If you don't you can call in, door, you can yeah, do it you can call for the in. first time ever, people. Sorry, Elena, go ahead. I'm yeah. sorry. Oh, no, I was just telling people, yes, that you can also do it online, but for people who don't have Wi-Fi access, um, you can call and do it. Um, it's simple. I believe it's like only like nine questions now. It's, it's real simple. I got all of um, Seven. It's, I got it's, all of that form. I got it, all of that. Okay, so this is directs billions of dollars of federal funding, as, as Leticia said, to schools, roads, public services. Also, it's important because the government knows the number of the, the population numbers that influences the number of seats in Congress. Um, now, as far as the questions, as in the big one, yes, Leticia, they have taken off the uh, citizenship question for 2020. So I have here. This is the census question. I'm gonna show y'all exactly what's on the question. So you get this little packet in the mail, which if you, you probably got it a long time ago, you threw it away, whatever like that. So now you're gonna have to do it online. Mm -hmm. But it's very simple. There's there's literally eight questions. I'm gonna tell you exactly what all the questions are. It was like seven, it was short. How many people are living or staying in this house, apartment or mobile home as of April 1st, 2020? So you put the number of people. Um, were there any additional people staying in there that you did not include in question one? Um, children, relatives, non-relatives, people staying here temporarily, no additional people. Is this a house apartment in mobile home? All right. And then is it owned by you or someone in the household, owned by you or someone in the household free and clear without a mortgage or loan, rented or occupied without payment or rent? What is your telephone number? 
Um, we will only contact you if needed for official Census Bureau business. Um, please provide information for each person living here. Your name, first, middle, initial, last. Your sex, male, female. There are only two sexes, there are multiple genders. So before we get little cute comments about that, there are two sexes, multiple genders. So sex, male, female. Date of birth, your age on April 1st, and then what's your date of birth, month, day, year? Um, are you, is person one, Hispanic, Latino, or Spanish origin? Um, what is person one's race? If you're white, they want you to specify. If you're German, Irish, English, Italian, Lebanese, Egyptian, black, or African-American, specify. African-American, Jamaican, Haitian, Nigerian, American Indian, uh, then Asian, Chinese, Filipino, there are boxes for that. Some other race. That's it. And then there's uh, the and same. No worries, you guys. Everything is confidential. All your information, your answers are confidential. So. So in the packet, yeah. there's that sheet for persons one through six. And if you have seven, eight, nine, and 10, all it asks is their name, uh, name, their sex, and their date of birth, and then their relationship to person number one. And then it says, if they need more information about subsequent people, they'll contact you. Those are all of the questions. Very simple. But again, like as Leticia alluded to, the importance of filling out the census. So it's very easy. If you have not filled out your census, you can still go online to my2020census.gov or you can call 1-844-3302020 and I'll put that in the chat. So if you have not filled out your census, go online, call in, get that done so that way your voice can be represented. And again, as, as the teacher said, it's not just you. It's about your community, your county, your state. So, and, and there are there there are a number of, of reasons because because the census data is accessible by people. Um, think about just tracking your family members, building your family tree, because a lot of our building and looking back came from census data. Um, you don't want to be a ghost, people. Somebody's going to be looking for you, going to want to know that you existed. Don't be a ghost. Um, it, it's just not used. Like, nobody's going to knock on your door and be like, we found out that you was squatting here. Like, no one cares. They're just counting bodies. Right. Fill out the information. And again, I, just to reiterate that we've all said, there is no citizenship question on the census. So for the people out there, that is a concern for y'all. That's not on the census. Feel free to fill, out, fill mm -hmm. that out. And again, have you have to be counted. And like, like what you said, don't be a ghost. All right, so I just put the, uh, the website and the phone number for the census in the chat. Do we got any comments? I can't see. We got any comments? I'm in my watch party. Have any? All right, oh, so okay. I just want to give some a couple of tidbits on the importance of the census. Um, so the importance of census, without the census, a government simply cannot know the total number of people living in the country. Um, so that it not only allows the government to know the total population of the country, but also whether the country is overpopulated or underpopulated. And this, you know, helps the government run the country effectively. Um, it's also very important because it helps a country in its planning efforts. Countries often oh. embark on central planning in their attempts to increase the rate of economic development within the country. This can be difficult to achieve or almost impossible if the authorities of the country do not know pertinent things about the country, such as the size, the structure and distribution of a country's population. So not only how many people are, but where the people are at. Absolutely. Um, so listen to this comment real quick, y'all. I'm so sick of, of that African-American box. I refuse to check it. I am just black. I re um, until you start identifying white as Polish American, Irish American, etc., I'm not doing it. I'm an American. That is all. I'm not an immigrant from anywhere. I felt the need to point that out because I, I share the sentiment. Like, I'm Black. I, I, I'm not immigrating from anywhere. I've been here right. my whole life. My family's been here their whole life. So 400 years ago, <laughs> like, yeah. why, why am I so African-American? Because, and that's the thing, most of us don't know, are we... Am I, my people was bought over here black or am I, my people walked over here way before that black? And most of us don't know. But to that point, they are asking, the census, go, the census Bureau has asked that for people that white 
to put to specify if they're Polish American or Italian American. Yeah, in the census, but that's not a general question anywhere else. Everywhere else, right. if you go into any government building, it typically says African American, and, so, and some of them have gotten cute and say or black, but you just white. <laughs> So hopefully with the census, maybe right. people are, you know, following d- directed directions and putting, okay, I'm white. My family is German. My family is Irish, whatever like that. Then hopefully that will, that will expand to other entities to where that becomes a more standard thing to where, okay, you don't get to just put white, you white, like what, like where white, white from where? White from where? Right. I'm just, <laughs> just saying, not going to start no mess today, but just saying. And another fact, the census, population census also helps bring foreign investors into the country. We all know that no country on earth can progress without foreign investors. So this Absolutely. is the reason why all governments in the world try their best to attract foreign investors into their various countries. When population census is conducted, the total population size, competition, composition, and distribution are revealed. This information is very important for an investor. So again, it helps, you know, you talk about economic prosperity right there. Um, this one, I'm going to read this, this based on what's going on now. This first thing is going to throw a lot of y'all. And the census can be used to control the population of a country. <laughs> In the event where the population is growing too rapidly for the good of the country, census can be used to control population growth. During census, obviously, the authorities get to know whether the population has increased or not. They find out that the population has increased dramatically, uh, such that is a, that is putting pressure on the resources of the country. That's the important part, the resources. Um they can decide to control population growth by intensifying sex education, giving tax relief to couples who reduce their family sizes by not giving birth to more children. So we always have this whole thing about people getting paid by the government to have all these babies. Well, now the government might be like, you know what? You can get paid to not have babies. So for those of y'all that make that argument, there you go. There you go. Fill out your census. The government might, might send you a check for using condoms. I'm just saying, if that's the case, y'all owe me some back money um, <laughs> later, but... <laughs> um, he said, "If you speak it in existence, you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Like, Yo, we can I'm pay condoms now. All right. Um, today. Thanks to census, comparing the standards of living among countries is possible and easy. The standard of living in a country is normally checked based on per capita income, and per capita income is obtained when you divide the total national income by the total population of the country." So again, if they don't know how many people are in the country, they can't get that accurate figure. Um, Since it shows the total number of people living within a country, it helps international organizations such as uh, the United Nations Organization and African Union to know the strength of each member of country. Also, it helps these international organizations determine how much contribution each member country makes to them. So it's worth noting that how how much each country that is a member of an international organization um, makes to the organization is based on the total population of the country. So without the census, you know, it would be impossible to know how much money we need to contribute to the international organization. Um, allows the country to know the geographical distribution of its population. Um, so how the country, how the population is spread over the countries. Again, where people are living at in these United States. Um, The average country in the world allocates its revenue and resources based on the geographical distribution of its population. Places of dense population are obviously going to get more resources than places of sparse populations. So basically, if you live in a city and you live in a large community and your community is underfunded, everybody in the community being like, hey, I live here is going to increase your chances of the government giving you more funding because they need to allocate more resources. So again, that's more money for your schools and more money for social services. Mm -hmm. Again, not just about you, but about your community as a whole. Um, and it, and it's mandatory, people. That part as well. It, yeah. it, it is mandatory because I don't think we touched that. It is mandatory to participate. Right. I think that there are fines attached. So basically, the same questions that you answer throughout your daily life, of, of anytime you're filling out anything, what's your name, what's your date of birth, What's your, your, your sex? What's your race? The same questions that you put on all these forms, put it on the census form and don't cost yourself money and also be able to get, your, get, get money for your community. 
That way, you know, when if and when COVID is and these kids go back to schools and things like that, and you wonder why this city got computers and this city got air conditioning and our city don't have nothing. Well, maybe because they don't know how many people in there. They don't realize that they need to send more money to your community. So again, save yourself money, possibly make some money by using condoms. And, and <laughs> I'm, I'm pushing for that. I am pushing for that. I, I'm not doing it. Y'all can play some games. Because we done gave y'all what it just we just packed it with information tonight. There was nothing really debatable. Are y'all ready to have some fun? Because I'm ready to have some fun. Let's have some fun. We didn't we let's didn't talk fun. That's let's, let's loosen up, ladies and gents. Last week was real heavy, so yeah, let's, let's lighten it up. So before we jump into this game, y'all, it's all love here at the love show. No one's mad at anybody. No one's beefing with anybody. We are we are all good in the family. Just opposing opinions, and this is what it's supposed to look like. You're never supposed to agree with people always. And when you don't agree, you find a happy medium and respect the opposing side and move on. And that's what we do here at the Love Show. I was going to make a joke, but I, I don't know how it's going to be received, so I'm going to keep it to myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you after we get after you later. <laughs> so what did we decide guys i think are we doing the uh the three three truths and a lie are we doing that again two, two truths and a lie y'all yeah. fred can't get this right to save his life y'all he's been <laughs> telling no fred it's just two truths and a lie look, look, maybe you only got, look, got to keep up with three I'll, truths and a lie this I walk weird. with truth. Maybe you don't walk with truth, Letitia. Maybe that's why you can only come up with two. I don't know. I don't know your business. I'm just saying. The game is called Two Truths and a Lie, sir. Like, why are you being Patty Fred? Oh, hey, everybody out there. My name is Frederick Wilson the second. Welcome. Um, I'd like to introduce myself. <laughs> don't be a Patty Betty. Don't be a Patty Freddy. I was going to say, you couldn't have thought of a dude's name. Like, I got to be petty and female. I got to be Patty LaBelle. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My bad. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm in a league of my own because I'm Lori Petty. Some of y'all ain't going to get that. Y'all. Oh, know. my God. Elena. <laughs> Hi, boo. Hey, <laughs> I don't want to talk to him no more. <laughs> uh, I guess I can, I can uh, start it off, game. But I got it. Right. Um, so I I'm a big fan of basketball. Um, I have two cats, and I am a mother of boys. So for those y'all, fan of basketball. I have two cats, and I'm a mother of boys. She's definitely a mother of boys, ladies and gents. So let's take that one off the the table. That's true. I'm going to say the lie is about the feelings. Because I don't know if you've talked about it, but I, I have a feeling that you like basketball. I don't know why. I don't know I don't know where in my where in the universe that's coming from, but for some reason, I'm thinking you're a fan of basketball. So I think... Yeah, I agree with you, because I've never heard her say anything about cats. And usually, like, pet lovers, people that have pets mention their pets in some capacity, generally. I don't then, remember her mentioning. She might, have eight cats she might have three. She said two cats. So she could have eight cats. She could have four cats, but not two. It's true. So I'm going to say the two cats is a lie. That's okay, what you going with? Hmm? Yeah. What is a lie? What's agree. your answer? I don't think you have felines. <laughs> well, I have a grand cat. What? My Wait. son has a cat. What? I have a grand cat. Lena? His name is no, I mean that doesn't count. That's not true. But if I do love basketball and I am a mama boy, but I don't have a cat. We, no, I don't. <laughs> I knew that answer. You ain't got no cat, girl. No, <laughs> even with my son, I go. I got visitation rights. You, you know, right. I, I spend time and then I go home. That's it. I'm gonna I'm say this. I have conceded to the whole fur baby thing because it's it's just a losing battle like i'm not gonna convince people like that is not your child that is an animal that you adopted that is part of your animal that but what i'm not gonna do is go on with lineage we're not having grand fur babies and that's my fur cousin we're not expanding it i'm gonna get you're not having grand fur oh that's my i don't know friend 
No, no. If you've seen him, he's pretty cute. I, I don't know. If you've seen him, you might have a change of heart. My you fur, I, 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 that's my fur niece. We're not doing fur that. Niece. <laughs> you know, Fred, I want to be an extra right now, but you're not. Yeah, I'm not. I have a fur grandbaby too. She's outside my door because she acting crazy. She don't act right, y'all. She's crazy. My son has a cat because it's, it's not my cat. It's not his cat. <laughs> and if he hangs off with one more Michael Kors bag, I'm going to be short a grand fur baby. Okay? <laughs> you ain't got I'm going to show you the picture. Not, look here, Gretchen. <laughs> Look here, Gretchen. Stop trying to make that happen. We're not finna do grand fur bait. No, yo, you, I'm gonna it's give you. It's a thing already. There I'll are bumper you. stickers. It's a thing already. You no. see that, bruh? Look, I'll make something <laughs> pick it. We not doing. I call me Wilson Pickett. We not doing it. We not doing it. We you can have a grand. You got fur bait. No, it's not. It's not. Y'all it not gonna make that thing. I it's refuse. A thing. I refuse. It's it's a thing. I refuse. You don't acknowledge it. It was sprung upon. I didn't plan this, friend. I didn't plan it. I didn't. Well, see, that's why you're not getting your census money because you got. Okay. <laughs> you see, I don't let the dog in the room when I'm I'm filming. He's in the corner taking up paper. Oh. All right, all right, Miss. So we we so we both got that right, Miss Letitia. What's your truth? And who's next? Who's next? Go, 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 go. <laughs> You just got real excited. Okay. <laughs> so my favorite alcohol is vodka. I have two businesses. And I have five children. You don't like vodka. See, the thing that's getting me is the businesses. Because I know you, I'm like, does she have two or does she have three? But I'm going to go with she vodka. I'm going to go vodka. I'm going to say vodka is not your favorite alcohol. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I'm going to say it's not vodka. Because I think. I it's think the businesses. It's the businesses. We <laughs> <Right. laughs> got three. Don't let her lie to you. Well, you know, you know what? I'm not going to. You didn't even let the. You didn't even let the 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 audience respond. Ernest responded. What Ernest said? Ernest, Ernest, Ernest said it's the businesses. Oh, what? and Fred, my sister said I feel like Fred is coming for me as a fur aunt. Hey, no, look, yeah, I'm coming for you. I'm co look, if I had your address, I'll be at your house tomorrow morning. You would, there ain't no such thing. Oh, this is what we're not finna do. I understand. Not do this. Look, I'm not trying to sit here and feel like 20, 30 cents. And now we got, okay, how many step, how many, how many step kittens do you have? What, what? No, we're not doing this. We're not doing this. <laughs> I, have, I, like, I will concede fur babies, but that's it. That's it. Oh, Any we got fur grandbabies. Fur on. Nope. So nope. I don't know what to tell you. Somebody that you know got got animals. No, we're not doing that. That's what happened. Because next thing you know, it just happened. It know, just what? happened. It just happened. When you, when you <laughs> get the babysitting fur babies and stuff, that's they they like the kids. I don't know what to tell you. No, they're not like. Oh, kids. okay. Animals are so much more. <laughs> I, I had too bad we can't claim them right on our taxes. I had to claim them on that hilarious. It's going to be somebody going to jail because they're going to try to do that. They're going to put down three or four dependents and they're going to be like, well, all these dependents, but they're going to mess up and only put first names. I feel like we should carry them as dependents. If I can put them on my look, the pet insurance check is a deductible, just like my health insurance. I should be able to carry mm -hmm. this little this little buzzet right here. Them vet, them vet bills ain't no joke. Mm -hmm. Nope. Mm -hmm. All right. The record so, so to answer your question, the lie is two businesses. I have three. Vodka is absolutely my favorite drink. And uh, it's absolutely my favorite drink. No, it's absolute. I vodka. just, I just, huh? Is absolute vodka your favorite drink, or is it just vodka? Absolute vodka. Is just vodka. vodka. I just. <laughs> oh, it, oh. I'm not going to tell you what it is because nobody cut a check. Right to be doing no um, maybe maybe you get that check okay. cut. 
she shouting us out? Like, is it Ciroc? Okay, I'll just, you know. Shout, shout out to Diddy and them. I just they definitely wasn't cut, cut no check. You know, puppy ain't cut no check. <laughs> he ain't got no check. Oh my god, I love you so much, Elena. <laughs> <laughs> Your turn, Fred. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. Mm -hmm. Cause I don't want to make it too difficult. All right, I'm 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 on over. Okay, so and it's funny because I was thinking about this yesterday. And I like I don't know why I cannot come up with questions. All right, so <laughs> I all right. Really, Frederick? Like, what is happening? <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh, you know, I'm gonna brag about myself. All right. So, I'm a phenomenal stage player. Um, he added phenomenal, so we know that's that's, that's, that's the truth. Because he said phenomenal. You right? Phenomenal. Good. Look. Having a um, hard time. Just one little lie and two truths about yourself. Just random facts here, <laughs> sir. I do not believe the moon landing. What? I said I do not believe in the moon landing. Okay. And I have never Okay, so I'm a phenomenal space player. I do not believe the moon landing and I have been to Canada. I don't think you believe in the moon landing. I was gonna say that too. Yeah, I I I was gonna go with that. Dennis got jokes. What Dennis saying? He said, "Fred, lost words. The world is coming to an end." Oh. Who's behind? Ain't been to Canada. Hmm. He hasn't been to Canada. Nope. Okay. Nope. All right, so Letitia, what's your what's your what's your answer? I don't believe that you think they landed on the moon. That's what I So you don't think that I think they landed on the moon? You say you don't believe in the moon landing, right? right. Yeah, I think that's the one. Okay. So you think that I think they did land on the moon? I don't know what the hell you think, but <laughs> that's, that's the one right there. All right, by, by the bottom E, what you got? <laughs> the moon. Y'all both wrong because I don't know how to play spades. Oh, I don't either. Don't feel bad. <laughs> I don't feel bad. I don't feel bad about it at all. I don't. I, I learned how to play spades when I was like a teenager and then I never played again. Dennis, and then I played again. Why don't you? Not mine. I don't even want to unpack that. All right, Dennis. I just learned, I just learned to go with my first, my first thought because as soon as he said, Phenomenal space player. I said, man, you be reneging. You don't be playing. No. <laughs> <laughs> but then when I heard Canada, I'm like, wait a minute. I've never oh, heard wait. that before. Yeah, I, Canada was like, yeah, he, he looked like he traveled. Okay. No, nah, I've been to Canada once. But yeah, nah. And then now I'm like, I'm not even going to try to learn how to play spades because black people, we don't act right with spades. And I'm like, I'm not even about to walk myself into that den of wolves. And be around a bunch of grown people trying to learn. No, mm -mm. so I'm like, you know what? Spray spades when my grandmother passed. Yes, that, was my, that was my spade partner, and I don't have my partner, so I'm never gonna play again. Yeah, I'm just like, I am not about to learn how to play spades and, and go through that. Mm -mm. Y'all not finna do it me. Like, exactly, it like y'all people be breaking tables and fighting, and they ain't we ain't spoke since pick for since Fourth July of, of '87 because at one time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm cool with that. Like couples be couples be breaking up over it for a night. You know, it's just it's, it's no good. No, no okay. point. Around me with some Uno cards, though. Oh my okay. God. Let me tell you I'm not responsible for how you feel after it happens. That's all I'm saying. So have y'all seen the new deck? Nah, I did see it. 
So the I've new day, it. you can write in like your rules. You can write. You can do people dirty on these. these new you can do them dirty. If only, dirty. Only thing is, I'm playing cutthroat. If, if we not playing cutthroat, I ain't playing because I don't play that sissy stuff. Like we playing cutthroat. You want to make somebody cry, Fred, yeah, in the game that. of Uno. You want to make people cry playing Uno. Mm. I mean, I, I don't need tears, but I really want you to be in your feelings for a minute. Like, we get done playing Uno. We <laughs> do you play Monopoly? Monopoly? Do I, I do. I have it in a while just because it takes forever. Yeah. But, I mean, I do play Monopoly. I'm not, you know, it's, it just it is what it is. I, I'm not opposed to it, but why? It do you does play? take forever. I, I got so, 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 <clears throat> ladies and gents, we've learned that you can't let Frederick play with your kids, no Uno, because he's oh. going to make them cry. Look, if they cry, they cry. I'm not going to try to make them cry, but if they, you know, if they, <laughs> if they, they cry, they cry. Uh, again, they're going to learn how to count. They're going to learn how to count. To the cookout and play Uno with the kids. Somebody's going to be crying. He's not going to care. <laughs> they're going to learn that multiples of four. I'm going to tell you that. He gonna tell him don't be a sissy as a matter of fact because he just said he don't play sissy you know. Because when your child put down the draw four and they're happy with themselves, and then somebody else put down the draw four and I put down one back to them. Now what's four times three? Go ahead and pick up twelve, little man. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna learn how to count today. You're gonna learn how to count today. Listen, my daughter, we did that the other night because y'all y'all know I got racket kids, so Uno is hilarious in my house. So the draw fours met my baby girl. Draw 16. And she had one of these cards in her hand that you can write in the rules. She drew her, her 16 cards, and then the next go around, she said, Now pick up the whole deck. Patty Batty, she is. Wait, so she wrote a rule that you can put on the, card <laughs> the whole deck? Pull the whole deck. Mm. And we was playing with a double deck of Uno cards. She ain't care. She ain't care. <laughs> She was, like, she was like, she said, it goes to you, Ethan, because you started the draw for us. I said, oh, she made. <laughs> no, wait. See, okay, that's cool. But I got to get my hand. Because mm -hmm. if I got 112 cards, ain't nobody getting out. Because ain't nothing you put out. Bet, I, was, I was sitting there. I was like, ooh, I'm mad I don't have a swap because I would wear them out. <laughs> Don't give me the whole thing. They don't know. It's a, that Uno in our DNA. Yeah, they be like, they be like Uno, but like, really? You see, I got 76 cards over here. You ain't getting out. No, no, no. Because I because what I got everything. You, I, look, you be sitting there with that one card for 47 turns. So I'll be gonna skip you with every skip in the deck. Just skip. Right. Ain't no Uno out. No skip, no. skill, 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 skill. <laughs> Just like Shannon Sharp. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Listen, so when we all come together, I'm not playing Uno because I'm, I'm not doing this with Fred. He is real, real but deep. I'm really, but I don't talk trash, really. Like, if I do, it's, you know, I, I ain't going to cry. I'm, I'm the type that you want to punch me in the mouth because I get real smug. Like, mm, okay. No. I, I, I feel that, Fred. I feel that. <laughs> oh, draw two? That's adorable. Mm. And you don't know I got That's three. adorable. Yeah, we going around a couple times. Cause ain't nothing worse. You put that draw two down, and then it come back to you, and you got another one. You be like, "All right, cool, boom," and then it start coming back around. You be like, "Oh no!" Oh. And then the person in front of you was like, oh. "And you be like, ooh. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I, was, I ain't got another one." Boy, you be sweating. Like, wait, wait. What y'all mean? Y'all coming back around? What? You you got one too? Oh, er, er, everybody got one. Oh, okay. We got, Only we got one thing one. worse than that. One of you on your toes. When you had that one thing keep on your toes. And then draw twos make his way around. Mm -hmm. Wait, say that again? I said only one thing worse. When you had one car left and then right. draw twos make their way around right to you and you're like, mother, who right. did this? Who started this? Right. Especially because mm -hmm. like you got two cars and one of them is a draw two. So you put yours down like, oh no. And you like, and then it keep coming back around. Like, and you looking at people, you looking, and you trying to read, read poker faces like, okay. Right. You know, like, you look nervous besides me, like okay, she looked nervous. I don't think she got one. And then she put one out like you, you poker got it. Now nah, Uno, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I ain't had a game night in a minute. I'm like, we don't have to get together and have a game night. Right. We inside and all of us in different states. Cause this will be fun. 
Yeah, that would be dope. For sure. For sure. It's the torch. Dre. You get down on Uno, Spades. I know you get down on Spades. I probably, I'm, I'm sure you get down on Spades. I'm a Uno, Spades, all that. Car player. Mm. I've been a car player since I was a young one. Hmm. Since I was nine. Young pup. Okay. So, yeah. we got Dre. so Dre, when it comes to Uno, on a scale of Packers run defense to 10, where are you at? The show is over. That's where I'm at. <laughs> the show is over. I felt like he was going to take. Yeah. I, Don't yeah. pop no. Hey. Don't pop your deuce. Look, look. No, you that- Every time Dre mentioned my squad, I'm going there. Y'all remember at the beginning of the show, he said something about the 49ers, and I ain't say nothing. But it's, it's look, they always. I said the 49ers. I keep them. Gerald McCoy. <laughs> <laughs> Gerald McCoy. 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 Gerald that's why fur ox is uh that's why fur ox is a thing now. <laughs> Deal with it. Yeah, my sister said she's <laughs> is she staying for her fur nephew. Shout out to Oreo. Auntie loves you. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we can't have nice things as a country. This is why. <laughs> this is why we nice love country. animals <laughs> collectively. Because people have it. Why? Because people having fur nieces and then and and people having taken everybody got a service <laughs> animal, emotional support animal and all this stuff and everybody bringing it yeah this is why we can't have nice things is that we can't have nice things. <laughs> emotional support <laughs> wait hold up let the record show before I love animals I like animals more than I like people so I don't want people to be like Fred hate animals or anything like that all I'm saying is you can leave your dog at the house sometimes um Bethany, you ain't got to carry little little toodles in a little bag everywhere you go. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> What's up, guys? <laughs> right, that being said, that concludes the show this evening. Right, that's, it's been a great show, folks. We definitely <laughs> let our voices in power. That's for sure. So did. That's for sure. As always, thanks for tuning in. Please, please. Let out Frederick be. <laughs> he likes animals. I, I like animals. Don't come for me. Don't come for me, Peter. I like, I like animals. He likes animals. Please don't persecute Frederick. <laughs> all, all I'm saying, they ain't, they ain't like you. Y'all have a good week. We appreciate y'all tuning in. Shout out to everybody in the comment section. Um, they, she done typed all the animal emojis she got. Just <laughs> have, have a great one, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good day. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. Make sure you download the On Point Network on Google yes, Play and catch up, watch all our episodes, tell all your friends and family. Hey, Lana, what they got to do? What they got to do, though? They got to what? Get into it.